We need our mirror to be properly calibrated, properly angled, properly aligned to make sure that the light matches the X-ray field. But is that always going to be the case? No. 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 So sometimes the light might be here, but the X-ray beam might be just very slightly off, right? The X-ray beam is here, sorry, the light is here in the orange, but the X-ray beam is actually hitting the area with the purple. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we notice here that the center is off, right? Um, off center. The X-ray beam and the light are not perfectly centered on each other. This is alignment. Alignment is about whether the center of the light matches the center of the X-ray beam. On the other hand, we have congruence. Congruence isn't about the center. We could be perfectly centered, but there can still be some differences between the light and the X-ray. And in this case, we are talking about the edges. Right? So, this might be the light, but to my X-ray beam might actually be slightly smaller, right? So I'm collimating, I'm like, okay, I've got light outside my anatomy. I should be good, I should the X-ray. I clipped something. Like, oh no, why? I saw the light. In this case, it's because the light didn't match the actual edge of the X-ray beam. The real X-ray beam was smaller than what the light showed me. So this is an issue with congruence. Congruence is do the edges match? So alignment is about the center, congruence is about the edges. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Wait. Yes, John. What causes it to like, what causes congruence? So in this case, it's just when we set up or when we calibrate the two, when we put the mirror in and try and make sure everything's correct. Right, so the engineer's there, they're tinkering with it, they check, they adjust, they check, they adjust. Right? And so they try and get it as close as possible. And then in comes the x-ray tech. X-ray tech doesn't see what the engineer did. They don't care about their painstaking work. They grab the tube and they're like, bang, 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 right? <laughs> and so, because they're so rough about x-ray tube, right? They occasionally like jostle, like, vibrate, like knock things out of position. And now it's maybe very slightly off. Okay, and so that might be why you are either slightly out of alignment or slightly out of congruence. And if it gets bad enough, then you have to call the engineer back in to readjust it. Mm. Yes. So if you're shooting blind, mm -hmm. um, what does that does that affect anything? Are you just shooting? You know, like when the light bulb goes mm -hmm. out, you shoot blind. Right? Yes. Um, the x-ray is basically going to go where you got the tube or mm -hmm. and you just look at your picture and go from there or does the you really really need the light at all times or so right in that case it's just like we don't have the light here at all mm -hmm. right we just the x-rays are still going to go where the x-rays go okay. right? light or no light the x-rays are still going to travel to the exact same spot we just don't have an easy way to determine if we are in position if we're properly collimated anymore. Mm -hmm. right? so that's when um you need to be very creative about how you line up your tube with your IR if you're not doing an exam where you lock into position. Now, if you do lock into position, then you have no issues, okay. right? Because you still have to be at the correct SID, you'll still be at the correct centering. And then you just position your patient based off the IR rather than off the light. Mm. Mm. Look at the slide that you're at. What do you mean? The collimator light. Collimator That's what we're talking about. No, she, she was light. trying to see what slide we're on. Oh, we're not, we're not oh, in the sorry, PowerPoint. This is light. Um, this is slide 18. 18. Thank you. So, are we okay with the difference between alignment and congruence? Mm -hmm. Alignment is about what? The center. The center. center. Congruence is about what? The edges. 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 All you need to know, alignment is about center, congruence is about edges. Sometimes the alignment is off um, the, on the IR. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. I think when I was at uh, Gulf Street, it was off, mm -hmm. so my image was always like mm -hmm. to the side, even though I was setting perfectly. That's right. So that would be an issue with alignment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So in that case, if you're aware of that, then you can always make a mental adjustment. Like, all right, if I center perfectly, my image always looks slightly left. So now this time I'm gonna point my central ray slightly to the right instead in order to make up for it, yeah. right? Something like that. That's what I had to do, I had to start Any other questions? No? Okay. All right. In that case. Yes. What is it? Chapter 12. What did I say? What did I say? I love that. Where's the phone? So, did you take off two things? So, I So, the reports of the last one were based on the accuracy of your answers at the very end. So, some of you, the most commonly missed question on that last quiz was about. <laughs> of an off-focus grid artifact, this happens when the SID is wrong. The grid is supposed to be focused to a 40-inch SID. You used it on a 72-inch SID. Mm. Or you have a 72-inch grid inside the IR, and you're shooting at a 40-inch SID. So the SID and the focal range of the grid do not match. When this happens, you will once again have a loss of exposure on the edges of your image. So for example, right, let's say that this grid here was a 72 inch focused grid. So we have our 72 inch SID, and you see the x-rays are coming through just fine because this angle matches the divergence of the beam. Here we have a 72 inch SID, but now the grid is a 40 inch focused grid, right? If you look at the grid lines, they're focused over here. They expect the divergence of the beam to be coming from this point. So this is a 40 inch grid, but we're shooting at 72 inches SID. So the divergence no longer matches the grid lines. And because of that, the edges are not going to have as much exposure. So it'll be white. So the edges will be white, the center will be black. It's actually gonna look a lot like your upside down. Okay. So are we okay with these four grid cut off artifacts? Once again, we have upside down, edges white, the center dark. We have off-level, grid is angled or tube is angled in the wrong way. The whole image looks more white. We have off-center. With off-center, just not centered to the focused grid. So the whole image looks kind of white, but it looks whiter when it's away from the central ray. Right? So the area of the central ray looks a bit darker the area of the upper central ray looks a bit whiter. Finally, we have off focus. Off focus is when you're at the wrong SID for the grid. So the edges look white, the center looks dark. Okay? For the first, for this question, then all four of them, then, are got, like when you're really saying it to me, it looks like whatever grid cutoff artifacts, because mm -hmm. these are the grid cutoff artifacts, right? So okay. Off focus and off. Um, occur with both focus and parallel grids. If they're yes. focused and parallel, if these are happening with both? Sir. They are not. What is that right They are not. I specifically mentioned that three of these are focused only. I specifically mentioned that three of these are focused only. Only one of them can happen with a parallel grid. The other three are focused only. For example, if I have my parallel grid upside down, 
Will that affect my image? That's right, a parallel grid, right? So if this is my parallel grid, if I flip it upside down, so now it's like this, the lines are still straight up and down. It doesn't matter which way you're shooting at, the lines are straight up and down. So parallel grids cannot give you an upside down grid artifact. That one is focused grid only. For example, off focus. If I change the SID on a parallel grid, will I have an off focus artifact? No. No, <clears throat> because my parallel grid is, does not have a specific focal range. I can use any focal range for my parallel grid. So I cannot get an off focus artifact using a parallel grid. That is focused grid only. Right. So you have two other possibilities. Think through them and then figure out which one is possible with a parallel grid. Okay. So let's go ahead and take our break right now. 10 minutes. Please be back at 1.35. Do we need to know what these are? Um no. So not as a picture, but at least know which areas will be darker, which areas will be upside down. Three. Yeah, upside down. Yeah. 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 Not yet. Okay, this is still gonna um, it is possible that you may need to identify an artifact as a grid artifact, as opposed to an artifact coming from something else like um get all this lecture. Metal, like a necklace, right, or an yeah. yeah. artifact caused yeah. by, like, a scratch yeah. in the IR yeah. or something like that. Um, Does it have to be the <laughs> this is a zebra pattern <laughs> on your image, <laughs> right? It appears as a series of lines on your image. Okay, why does this happen? Right, well, we've got my explanation here, or we have this one here. So. Do you all know the uh, piece of pie song, right? Uh, when the moon hits your eye like a big piece of pie. Oh, like, that's a worry? Right? So, <clears throat> right. When a grid's misaligned with another grid behind, that's a moray effect. Right? So, that is the moray artifact, the moray effect. You've got grids that are misaligned. Okay? Grids which are misaligned give you the morning artifact. In this case, what are our grids? Thank you. Bless you. One grid is the actual grid. The second grid is actually the direction in which we scan our PSP plate during CR processing. Remember, in CR, we have the fast scan, right? When we scan back and forth. That fast scan, right? If it has a similar frequency to your grid's frequency, right, the number of lines per inch, and they are just very slightly misaligned, you get the Moiré artifact. So, uh, right, so if this is our grid, and this is the way we scan our lines, notice that by overlapping these, we get these dark bands that come across, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we are seeing here. You see these lines coming across our image at a slight angle? Mm -hmm. These black lines at a slight <laughs> angle, that is the Moiré artifact. Okay, so the grid is at a slightly different angle to the way we are scanning our CR cassette or our PSP plate inside the reader. So this one, right, this would be something like a linear grid. So you've got your linear grid, which is going like this. You've got your CR, which scans like this. And when you overlap them, you get these lines here. Linear grid. So, so Focus, um, parallel doesn't matter. So both. 
So either it could be either. It could be either. So the main key here would be your linear. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, sir. The the more effect is a type of uh, artifact. Yes. But uh, the 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 other four are. Well, how would you differentiate between the other four and this one? The other four are called grid cut off artifacts. They occur because you positioned your grid incorrectly. This one is something that happens during processing, right, when you're reading your PSP plate. So this has nothing to do with blocking x-rays in the wrong location. This is just about your grid in the processor being slightly misaligned. Now, you guys are actually all very familiar with the Moiré artifact. You guys probably see this quite often in your everyday lives. Have you, do you remember a time when you encountered the Moiré effect? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Samantha? Well, I'm not so much an x-ray, but I've seen it just taking pictures of my right phone to computer. It happens every single time, no matter and what I try uh, to do. <laughs> Any time you try and take a picture of your monitor That's with your phone, yeah. do you notice how you get these yeah. weird ring patterns? these weird lines on your image, that is also the Moiré effect. So it's the same idea, right? That is, that is exactly what is happening. So physics is cool, right? Well, period, right? <laughs> it is both in X-ray and in your everyday bodies. So, yes? You're saying the, um, the CR, the laser, mm -hmm. the scanning it, but why would a grid go in there? Mm -hmm. Because remember how our grid lines exist in the image and they only disappear because we do pre-processing or we have that moving grid, right? So if this is before pre-processing, if our grid lines still exist on the image, those grid lines and then this way it scans will interact in a way that causes these lines to pop up. All right. So remember all the way back here, mm -hmm. when we said that grid lines can show up on the image? Yeah. Right, so you have grid lines here, if this is CR, and we were scanning in a slightly different direction, that is how we would get the Moiré effect. It's not that you're sticking the grid inside the processor, right, but it's the effect of the grid plus the way the processor scans that gives you that Moiré effect. Okay. The registry is not going to ask you too far into detail. Yeah. The grid lines, are, if they're like this, the grid, the grid lines are like this, mm -hmm. and then the CR is scanning in between them. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it will be perpendicular, but it's scanning in the same direction, but just very slightly off. The grid lines are like this, CR is scanning like this, right? So slight A ahead of it. Mm -hmm. So if you already have that. That's how we get these black strips. Right. So, a few final things about grids. Number one, when do we use grids? On the thick anatomy. Thick anatomy. What's, so, why thick anatomy? To reduce scatter. The anatomy produces a lot of scatter. Good. Okay. Why do we not just use a grid on everything and reduce all the scatter? Mm -hmm. And then you're also reducing oh, a lot of extra costs. That's so good. Good. So if we try to use a grid on everything, that means the grid is absorbing x-rays, we need to turn up the mass, and so we end up raising patient dose. So we only want to use the grid when absolutely necessary. Okay. So, for anatomic parts thicker than 10 centimeters, this is about four inches, okay? We use grids on anatomic parts that are usually thicker than four inches. Right, and also we wanna look at how much of the scatter is expected. So, finger, right? It's definitely less than four inches, no grid. Right? Hand, less than four inches, no grid. Forearm, no grid. Elbow, still less than four inches, no grid. A shoulder, yeah, shoulder's thicker than four inches. 
shoulders in the chest area, we expect more scatter. So we would try and use a grid for shoulder x-rays. Now, shoulder is kind of on the borderline, right? So you might be able to get away with no grid if your patient's small enough. But then it gets to something like hip or pelvis. Really thick anatomy, lots of tissue in there, lots of scatter. You definitely want to use a grid on hip or pelvis x-rays. Uh, Angelica, do you have one question? No. no. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So when you me. say hip, hip, or pelvis X-ray, mm -hmm. you're not really talking about the bone. You're talking about the soft bone. tissue as well. Mm -hmm. All that makes up the thickness. So it's going to be thicker than 10 centimeters. It's thicker than four inches. So you want to use a grid. Now, we're not going to say always use a grid on everything that is thicker than 10 centimeters, because sometimes you have extenuating factors. You need to take other stuff into account. For example, how accurately can you center your CR to the grid? If you don't think you can center properly, and you think that you might end up with grid cutoff, right, off the center grid cutoff, then maybe it's better to just not use the grid. Better to have a, an image with scatter than an image with a grid cutoff artifact. Does that make sense? How accurately can you put the SID in the focal range? Right. If all you have is a focused grid and you can't measure your SID for whatever reason, should you use the focused grid? What if you don't know what the focal range of that grid is? Should you use the grid? Right. So you need to kind of make that decision. I don't know what kind of grid this is. I don't know what SID I'm supposed to use with it. So I probably I'm going to try not to use this grid to avoid grid cutoff artifacts. Right? That's a reasonable um, conclusion. Okay. On the other hand, what if you were doing a T-spine X-ray? If you're doing a T-spine, then you're like, well, on a T-spine, all I care about is the center of my image, right? I'm going to collimate off the sides. Even if I don't know what SID I'm supposed to use it at, Focus grids only show the artifact, right, off focus artifacts on the sides. So I could still use the grid for a T spine because I'm just going to collimate off the sides and we won't see the artifact. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you need to start taking these different factors of the grid into account, right? What kind of artifacts might show up? Where will they show up? Will that interfere with my anatomy? Is my anatomy thick enough to even warrant the use of a grid, right? Different things like that. And finally, right, is the CR expected to have an angle? Okay, maybe I want to use a grid, but I can't guarantee that there won't be an angle. If I angle, what kind of artifact would I end up with? What is the artifact with the angle? Focus, non-focus. Off-level, very good. An off-level grid <laughs> cutoff artifact. Right? So if I have an angle, I could run into an off-level artifact. Do I want to risk it? Right? That would be a decision you need to make. Mm. So grid usage depends on a variety of factors. Okay. You always, there's no one size fit all. You always need to take a look at your situation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I do have a question. Yes. You know, like when you're a grid talk, they mm -hmm. usually always have a grid in there. Yes. In most of the machines, and mm -hmm. even in the phone clinic, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to like clinics, they don't. They don't. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the clinics, places like um, Strawberry, Golfgate, Audi, um, I think MLK, mm -hmm. using the old GE style machines. Mm -hmm. um, those do not have removable grids. Those grids are built into the wall bucky. They're built into the table bucky. You can't move them. You can't change them out. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those unfortunately you have to work with what you have. The newer places, newer machines do have grids where you can exchange them. All right. So radiation protection. Collimation helps to reduce patient dose 
in scatter production. Right? If we only need to see, for example, the L spine here, there's no reason to get the entire pelvis. Right? You collimate in, and so you reduce the patient dose, but at the same time, you notice that your contrast also increases because you have less scatter as you collimate in, right? So your contrast is increasing. Now, of course, don't collimate so much that you clip your anatomy, right? Something like this would be reasonable. Okay. Grip usage also helps to reduce scatter. But like we said earlier, if you use a grid, you end up raising your mass. If you raise your mass, you end up raising patient's <laughs> dose. Okay. And the higher the grid ratio, the more mass you need. So the more patient dose you will get. So as far as grids go, right, we want to use the lowest grid ratio that removes adequate scatter. Okay. So if you have to make a choice between a, an acceptable image with some scatter and a super optimal image with minimal scatter, go with the acceptable image rather than the optimal because that way you get less patient dose. Use a weaker grid rather than a stronger grid when possible. Okay. So just be careful with grids because they do cause you to increase mass, they do cause you to increase patient dose. Potentially. Usually it's not going to be a big enough deal that you have to worry about it. Yes, John. So you know how you said if the anatomy is thicker than 10 centimeters to use a mm -hmm. uh, grid? So yes. if it's like close to 10, mm -hmm. is it better when it comes to radiation protection, is it better to use a grid? If or you're talking about radiation protection, it's better to not use a grid. No, like I'm saying, um, so we, it's, is it, uh, image over radiation. Mm -hmm. Like, would you are, are you are we prioritizing radiation mm -hmm. or okay. the image quality? I see. Your goal is to reach a minimum image quality, and then radiation protection after that. So just okay. get enough image quality to where it's diagnostic, and then radiation protection. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. By the way, does using a grid help to reduce occupational dose? From scatter. No. 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 Mr. Donnie asked that same question. Grids, well, grids reduce scatter, right? Yeah. Grids reduce scatter reaching the IR. It doesn't reduce scatter production. So be careful with that. Mr. Donnie, you ask the same thing you said? Like the beginning of the semester. Right? At the beginning of the semester. I wrote it down. Okay. So the answer is that no, grids will not reduce occupational exposure. So. Yeah, why, why would? So, why would a grid reduce Don't think that using a grid will help it's save yourself radiation. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, it wouldn't do occupational. Okay. So, okay. all right. Two more slides. We're almost done. Two more slides. Okay. Air gap technique. We talked about this last chapter as well. If you increase the OID, you decrease the amount of scatter which reaches the IR. Mm -hmm. Okay, so air gap technique is another way to reduce scatter in your image. Once again, this, not, this does not affect scatter production, right? The same amount of scatter is being produced, it's just less of it reaches your IR, right? So scatter happens here inside the head, but because of divergence, it goes off around to the sides, and less of it actually reaches your image. Okay. Now, we do lose some exposure, so we may end up having to increase mass. Okay. But this, is, this amount of increase in mass is nowhere close to the amount of mass you would increase for a grid. Right? So this is actually better as far as patient dose when compared to a grid. You reduce scatter, but you don't need to increase mass as much. 
very good. So the question is, well, if this is better for the patient, why don't we just use this? Because if you have more OID, you have more magnification and less sharpness. Right? So your image quality goes down when you use the air gap technique. So you need to be careful about when it's employed. Correct. It's all about trade-offs, right? There's nothing that you can get for free in the X-ray. And every time you change one thing, you lose something else. You gain here, you lose there. Right. It's just, just like all of life, right? Life is always about trade-offs. You spend time studying for PRE, and then you don't have time to study for anatomy. You try to study for both PRE and anatomy, now you don't have time to go to your kid's concert recital or something, right? It's all about trade-offs. Or you can manage the balance. Hey, and then final, final thing to talk about is shielding. So when you are doing um, T spines and L spines with Mr. Donahue, right? When you're doing this in lab, one of the things that was mentioned was when you do these laterals, you can place a sheet of lead behind your patient. And that sheet of lead is there to help absorb a scatter, right? So a scatter comes from the patient, right? It tries to scatter down to the IR, but the lead here is absorbing the scatter. It reduces the scatter reaching the IR. Okay. Once again, this does not reduce patient dose. It only reduces scatter reaching the IR. Yes? So the scatter Please. must always come through the patient, right? Scatter is produced in the patient. Scatter comes from. Nothing else from is called scatter in radiology. I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to say, let's say that nothing that you need to care about. Okay, scatter can be produced with any interactions with matter, even the air. But we're not going to worry about that. Our main focus is on the patient. Patient produced scatter. That's where most of it comes from. Okay. Also, as far as shielding goes, Right, make sure you do shield anyone in the room with the patient. Why? Because the patient is our source of scatter. Right? This patient is causing scatter radiation to come out. So if there's someone near the patient, like helping to hold the patient or support the patient, make sure that person has lead on. At minimum, right, on that apron. If you're fancy, you can even give them a thyroid shield. Right? But make sure that person in the room with the patient is shielded. If you're doing a floral exam, right, you've got the patient on the table. That patient is a giant source of scatter. What do you do? You stand behind the doctor. Yeah. Right? Let the doctor absorb the radiation, right? They can absorb the scatter and then you'll be more safe. <laughs> or you just stand further back. Remember, time distance shielding. Right? Distance. Increase your distance from the patient, less scatter will reach you because of the inverse square law. You can hide behind the wall, but, but normally you're supposed to be in the room with the doctor. I'm in the room. I'm in, I'm just not in the room. So you know how when you go in the room, I'm in the room. You go in the room, there's that wall right there. You should, be, you should be directly accessible by the doctor, not, not on the other side of the window. When they give you a check, I will definitely do that. But right now, I'm just observing. Okay, yes. When they give you a check, that's right. When you're the actual technology, right? That's right. When you're running the room with the doctor. Other than that, I'll observe. Yes, I see. Then we'll get to it. And then we have a question about this in Rackrow. And it said it causes overexposure. Number five, yeah. Causes more. Alright, so one situation where this can cause overexposure. So this is going to combine. Like, decrease the scatter, increase scatter, or was it overexposure or underexposure, something like that. And the answer was overexposure. So I'm not quite sure exactly what the question was. But I, let me give you a scenario where it could be um, overexposure. Oh, yeah. And this is going to combine both my class, Mr. Donahue's, and Ms. Bonilla's. 
Okay. Because in this Bonilla's class, what have you been talking about? A, B, C. A, B, C. Yeah. Right, so imagine that you're doing a spine exam like this. You've got this lead shield like this. You have your ABC on, but you have accidentally activated one of the cells that is underneath this lead. Right? So if the cell is underneath the lead, when you shoot your x-rays, will the cell receive x-rays? Minimum, right? The lead's going to absorb most of those x-rays. So this cell is like, I need more x-rays before I'm going to turn you off. So come on, give me more x-rays, give me more x-rays, right? And you just keep shooting, and you keep shooting, and you keep shooting, until finally enough gets through here where it's like, all right, I'm happy, we're good. But by that time, you will have overexposed your image. Okay, so that is one way that doing this can cause overexposure. If you're not careful, if you cover up a portion of your AEC chamber, right, that can cause overexposure. Okay, ask Ms. Bonilla then. That is a Ms. Bonilla question because it's AEC. You know what's funny? She has the same thing. But maybe you can talk to me again so if you don't mind. We'll talk about that during study hall then, because that is outside PRE. Right now we are focused on PRE, and this is our final slide. So we are done with chapter 12. Yay! Oh yes, I'm sorry, Reagan. So you had a question as well. I apologize. I apologize. Yes. I was just gonna say, this is talking about shielding, like not the patients, right? Like this is just talking about using this way. Correct. So as far as this theory goes to reduce scatter. Right? Either use this to protect the IR, and then to reduce scatter to other people, like occupational dose, shield the person near the patient. Because I was thinking, like, it says does not reduce patient dose, but I was thinking, like, put it on it. Ah, yes, this is specifically about um, protecting the IR. Okay, um, it is 2 o'clock, so we are done with PRE. On Friday, we are going to be doing a review. On Monday, we will have our exam, okay? Make sure you continue to do your flashcards, right? Make sure that you are familiar with all the different categories of grids and their different properties. All right, and let me pick up your papers. Let me pick up your papers. I didn't have like five okay. this short game. Alright, I'll get these back at the end of study hall. And you have the other one as well. I do. I will give those back as well. Stop by my office. Okay. Yeah. Monday the fourth. No. Monday the fourth. Monday. 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 Thank <laughs> you.